All right, in this video, we are gonna be calculating horsepower requirements in order to pump a certain amount of water to a certain location. Uh, we're gonna look at the parameters associated with that, and we're gonna look at the three different types of horsepower that we calculate. So the formulas we're gonna be working off of come on the front page of your water distribution or water treatment uh, conversion sheet, top right-hand corner, you're gonna see pumping. And you're gonna see three equations, water horsepower, brake horsepower, and motor horsepower. Right. So where do those come from? Well, I first want to take a look at the idea of a pump and a motor and how kind of electrons flow through that. So this right here is think of this as our, our energy source. Right? We've got our motor and our pump. So what I'm doing is I'm literally plugging my motor into the wall. Right. And this represents the energy flowing into the motor. Now, think about it. Is there any motor out there 100 percent efficient? No. Right, we're always going to lose some energy. So the amount of energy going in is going to be less than the amount of energy coming out. Right. So think about that idea. We've got our motor plugged into the wall. So that electricity is being drawn into our motor. Our motor is taking that electrical energy, it's turning it into mechanical energy. Right. And so our motor now is going to transfer that energy to our pump. Right. So this transfer of energy, though. This pump is also going to lose some of that energy as well, right? There is no pump that is 100% efficient. So what does that mean? It means that the total amount of energy pulled from, say, the grid, by the time it gets transferred through our motor into our pump and then actually imparted to water, we're going to have lost a decent amount of energy. And so the way we look at the different energy requirements at each of these phases, we break it up into three basic categories. So the first of those is what we call our motor horsepower. This is what our motor is actually rated at. This is the amount of energy we need to pull from the grid so that it can be passed from the motor to the pump and imparted to the water. We also have what's called our brake horsepower. Now our brake horsepower basically is the amount of energy that we need to transfer to the pump so that we can then move water. The last one right here is what we call our water horsepower. Now the water horsepower, this is the amount of energy that's actually imparted to water. So when you look at the three of these, which one do you think is gonna be the biggest energy requirement given the same parameters? Well, hopefully you're saying it's going to be the motor horsepower because this is the total amount. So if I had, let's just say arbitrary numbers, if I had, you know, five horsepower requirements here, some of that energy is going to be lost through the motor. So the transfer to the pump, maybe now I'm only transferring something around, say, 4.5 horsepower. I'm going to lose some of that energy in the pump. So the amount of energy transferred to the water might only be, say, four horsepower. So we're going to lose some of that energy as that's transferred down the line. So given the same parameters, our motor horsepower is always going to be largest. Our water horsepower is going to be smallest. Now let's take a look at this breakdown when it comes to the actual equations themselves. So let's start off with our water horsepower. I'm just going to do WHP for water horsepower. If we look at our formula sheet here, you'll see that water horsepower is equal to the flow rate in GPM. So we want our flow rate in GPM. We're multiplying that by our total head, right? So we're gonna multiply that by our total head and that's gonna be in feet, right? So I need my total head in feet, I need my flow in GPM and we're dividing by this conversion factor, 3960 and that's gallon per minute per foot. And there is even the little derivation of this 3960 conversion factor on the very top. And that's how we get from this 3960 to 0.746 kilowatts to 746 watts to one horsepower. All right, so this is sort of our magic conversion number, if you will. Now, in these problems, you're going to be given a scenario where, say, we've got a reservoir sitting on top of a hill. Right? And imagine down at the base of this hill right here, this is where your pump is going to be located, right? And so what do we need to do? We need to move water from this pump station uphill into our reservoir, right? And there's two main factors we need to consider here. One of them is the flow rate, right? How much water do we actually want to be moving? And the other one is our total head. Now, remember, we've defined head in terms of altitude head, right? How 
how much taller is the res bottom of the reservoir from the pump? We've defined pressure head is the amount of head in the reservoir. We define velocity head. We also talked about head loss, right? The loss is associated with friction, the size of the pipe, the diameter of the pipe, the pipe smoothness, right? That so-called C factor. Um, so we looked at that Hayes and Williams equation to describe that head loss. Total head takes into account all of the positive contributions of head as well as the head losses. Right? That is what we're looking for in here. So I'm not necessarily looking to see that the pump is 100 feet above this reservoir. I'm looking for the total head. Right? And so those are the kind of numbers we're going to be given in these calculations. So this is for our water horsepower. So let's look at a given scenario where our desired flow rate, let's just say, is going to be 250 GPM. And our total head is equal to 150 feet. Right, so given these parameters, I want to calculate, okay, well, what are the horsepower requirements going to be for this scenario here? So I've got my conversion factor. I've got my flow rate of 250 GPM. I'm going to multiply that by 150 feet of head. After I multiply those two together, I'm then going to divide those by that conversion factor, which is that 3960. And I get to a water horsepower of, we'll call it 9.5 horsepower, okay? So there's my water horsepower, right? I'm going to keep that up here because I'm going to end up erasing this. Water horsepower, 9.5. Given the same conditions, I want to now look at, okay, well, what is the brake horsepower, right? So the difference, if you look at the formula between the water horsepower and the brake horsepower is that the brake horsepower, if you look at the bottom, let's pull out our formula sheet, our brake horsepower incorporates the efficiency of the pump, right? So now we need to take into account the efficiency of a pump. So let's just say we've got a pump and we've also got a motor efficiency here. Let's say our pump is going to be 90% efficient and our motor is going to be 85% efficient. These are pretty new, very, very good tech. So what are we looking at? We need a pump efficiency of 90%. It's important to remember that you're plugging it in in its decimal form. If you divide that by 90, you're going to get a very, very, very small number, which is the wrong direction we want to be going. So that's the only difference between the water horsepower and the brake horsepower is we incorporate the efficiency of the pump. Right? And you're going to be asked directly, calculate the brake horsepower. What do you do? You go right to your formula sheet. You grab the equation. You plug in the numbers that you need. So all things given the same, the 250 times 150 divided by my conversion factor, the 3960 times 0.9, I end up with a brake horsepower of 10.5. 10.5, right? So a little bit more, which makes sense, right? Because we're losing some of that energy due to the efficiencies of the pump. Now I want to look at, lastly here, my motor horsepower. Right? And the only difference between brake horsepower and motor horsepower is now we're considering the efficiency of the motor as well as the pump. Right? So I keep that 0.9, the efficiency of my pump. I'm going to add in the efficiency of my motor at 0.85. And now I'm going to run the same numbers. Right? My flow rate I'm trying to pump is still the same. My total head is the same. And I have my conversion factor there. So let's do it again. 250 times 150. I'm going to divide that out by this 3960 times 0.9 times 0.85. And I hit multiply instead of divide. Make sure your number makes sense. I get a motor horsepower equal to 12.4 horsepower. So take a look at those three numbers. What do we see? We see that our brake horsepower is the largest and our water horsepower is the smallest. So what does it mean? This motor horsepower means that I need to pull this much energy from the grid in order to power that motor. And this is the amount of energy that I'm going to actually be transferring over to my pump. And this is the amount of energy I'm going to actually be imparting to the water based on the conditions of a certain amount of flow and a certain amount of total head. So whenever you read a problem regarding horsepower, you always want to look at what are you calculating. You want to grab the right formula, and you want to make sure you're looking at flow, ensuring that it's in GPM. 
you want to plug in total head and feet. And then if you are using the efficiency of the pump and motor, make sure you're plugging in the decimal form.